Hi guys, I hope you're all good. I'm coming on today really quickly to run through the shepherd's pie recipe with you. And before I get started, just a few little pointers that will make all the difference to your dinner. Basically the meat, try if you can, get into your local butcher and get some fresh round steak mince, as opposed to buying it pre-packed in the supermarket. It will make all the difference, it's fresh. And your veg, I don't really like celery, I like turnip and carrots, so that's what I use, but you can use whatever you like, mushrooms, parsnips, whatever you like. Um, so let's get started. Okay, fry up your mince. I've added a little rasher in there, just because I have it. Give it a quick shake and break down all of them big lumps. You don't want any of them. So to bring them to the top, give it a shake and break them down. Next you want to add an oxo cube, a dry one, break it in, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, mix that all up and set it aside. Okay, first up fry your onions in some butter and olive oil for about two minutes and then you want to add your veg, my carrots and my turnips are going in there for another maybe two or three minutes until they soften. Okay, my veg has been cooking there for about six or seven minutes on a medium heat and I'm going to add in that meat and mix that all up. Okay, so we're going to thicken up our sauce by adding a tablespoon of flour, mixing that all up. Okay, next up is two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, this one, and a good squirt of tomato puree. I'm going to mix that up. Okay, next up is half a pint of chicken stock. I'm going to add this in two pieces and I'll come back. Okay, that's all bubbled up. So the last thing is I'm going to add some fresh thyme. I have that frozen in my freezer. Um, a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. At this point, be sure to taste it. See how it tastes. And that is your meat sauce all done. Okay, so I need to wait for my potatoes to boil. I've put some parchment paper on top. And I'm going to cover it with some tin foil. I'm going to put it in a low oven, maybe 100 for the next half hour, just to make everything soften and go lovely and um, cooked through for your base. Okay, for the spuds, a uh, few little ingredients that you need to add. The most important, as you all know, my favorite ingredient in the world is butter. So add your butter, your salt, a little bit of warm milk, make sure it's warm and not cold, something to do with the starch. So I'm adding a little bit of warm milk, not too much, and some white cheddar. I'm going to mix that all up and I'll come back. Okay, so I've mixed that all up and by adding the milk, I was actually able to whisk it with a whisk and it just gives you that lovely fluffy potato texture. So I'm going to add that to the top of my base and I'll come back. Okay, so I've got a large fork and I'm just going to scrape them out very roughly, just to roughly cover the whole area. We can make it look nice after. And this makes sure you have um, nice thick potatoes on top and you don't have a skinny little line of potatoes and a big load of meat. There's nothing more annoying than that. So I've got all my spuds out and I'll come back and even it off. Roughly covered everywhere. And just very gently, don't press down or you're going to compress all the potatoes. Cover it all up, nice and even. And when you have that done, it's okay if there's a few little bits open, you can let the juices bubble out. And when that's all done and you feel it's nice and even, you can give a final sprinkle of cheese on top, pop it in the oven, 25 minutes, you'll know yourself when it's done. And that is it. And that's it. I had to put it in the grill to make it cook a little bit quicker because we're all starving. So I hope you give it a go. It's really delicious and even nicer the next day. Feel free to share, let me know what you think and I will talk to you all soon.